fair enough. I'll I'll take it. Uh, I did want to touch on thermal. Uh, this was my world for a long time, and this isn't a thermal 101 thing. On this video, you're just going to see some thermal zoom, and I think that it, it illustrates like how you can hold in position and really get to see small componentry here on a on a power pole. But uh, when we're talking about thermal, uh, you're obviously able to see things that have a different temperature, um, but you're also able to measure that temperature. And these are all radiometric cameras uh, that that FLIR is putting on on airframes these days. Uh, and I just wanted to point out, like, there's some people that are not super comfortable with thermal. I have been riding the back of thermal since December of 2015 in the drone space. And so if you have deeper questions on what you can do with thermal, please reach out. But uh, when people see images like this, uh, they, they look at the color palette and it's, it's recognizable as thermal, or there's also black hot, white hot, things like that. Just know a few things that not every palette is uh, created equally. There's different use cases for different palettes. So when you're looking for people, you don't use this palette, you use white hot or black hot. When you're doing inspections like this, where there's going to be a large variance in the temperature or the delta T, which is listed on the side, then you can use a high, uh, high visibility, um, high contrast color palettes like this. Um, you don't just go fly a thermal camera and expect you're going to get really good data on the first day uh, if you haven't been trained. And so there is some things to know. Know that uh, if you, like I said, if you have questions, I'm happy to to walk you through what I do know. But the use cases, like we mentioned with the with drones in general, the use cases for thermal are almost endless. Public safety, solar inspection, utility inspection, uh, wildlife applications, water conservation. Uh, there's tons. And so just don't, don't think that whatever you have narrowed the use cases for thermal in your mind to be, know that you're, you're missing some because they are like endless. Uh, and maybe we'll do some like more thermal webinar related stuff in the future. But I thought like I would touch on it a little bit here. Um, and also DJI has put in a ton of features to make thermal analysis and thermal flights easier. Um, spot meters are basic, are very basic. You're gonna be able to see the temperature of any pixel within the image as you tap around. You can measure entire areas and look for the hottest points and, and the coldest points within that area. You're able to have a, an al alarm go off if anything that the camera passes over is over a certain temperature, which would tell you you have a hot spot or something like that. The, DJI has dug deep into making the most advanced thermal payloads for drones out there. Um, and I have, like I said, been a part of that since the beginning. The Zenus XT1 uh, launched in December of 2015. And the evolution has been significant in miniaturizing and lowering the price and in packing this thing full of smart features. And so uh, with the Mavic 3 Thermal, uh, you're getting everything that you were basically getting with the Zenus XT2 plus more and, and in such a, a smaller compact uh, body uh, and at a price point that's that's insane. So uh, definitely look into it if you're looking to, to move your thermal fleet into something else. The transportability alone should should make that desirable because I've lugged a M200 and M300 around for, for quite a while and it's, yeah, the, the data's pretty much on par. Uh, 